Hello, 10 Bound attendees. I hope you're all having an excellent day. I would like to thank you for joining us to discuss a variety of topics impacting go-to-market programs and sales development strategies to optimize your company's pipeline generation. My name is Nick Rathchen, and I'm the Vice President of Account Development at Samsara. I've been leading Samsara's sales development efforts for the past five and a half years and managing sales development groups for about 11. During my time in management, I've worked at smaller startups and larger publicly traded companies. So I've seen the full gamut of sales development environments at companies with varying levels of maturity. Prior to managing, I was an account executive for eight years. Over the next 20 minutes, I'm going to discuss talent acquisition and retention strategies, focusing on the present economic environment, specifically how companies and sales development groups can take advantage of this period, while also shining some light on what keeps reps at companies and what individuals should focus on as they navigate their careers. Before we get into the crux of this presentation, I want to give a brief overview of my company, Samsara, and how we provide value to our customers. We're the pioneers of the connected operations cloud, which helps digitize the world of physical operations. Samsara helps the industries that power our economy to be safer, more sustainable, and more efficient. We just celebrated our eighth birthday as a company and are publicly traded on the New York Stock Exchange under the IOT ticker symbol. We have an annual recurring revenue of 795 million as of our last earnings call, and this is at a 42% annual growth rate. I'm proud of the work we've accomplished and incredibly excited about what the future holds for us. Okay, now let's try to make sense of the world win that we've experienced recently. There have been more twists than an M. Night Shyamalan movie and more curveballs than a spring training baseball game. We found ourselves in an incredibly dynamic in, uh, economic environment over the past several years. As we've come out of the pandemic, we've seen individuals and companies alike reevaluate their current positions as they navigate employment trends and macroeconomic conditions. This is an unprecedented period, but in all situations, there is opportunity. Okay, let's now focus on the last 18-ish months as people re-emerged from the pandemic. Everyone had some time to think about life, their purpose, and how they were spending their time. In mid-2021, we saw employees resigning from their jobs in mass. The number of departures were in such high volume that this period was labeled as the Great Resignation. After finding new passions and means of employment, the U.S. saw record low unemployment. Essentially, there are more jobs than people as we dipped below the 5% natural unemployment rate. Much of that cash companies received during the pandemic had gone into headcount growth. But what became clear is that some people were not as enthusiastic about their return to normalcy and, and what they were doing professionally. This resulted in a new phenomenon uh, known as, as silent quitting, not actually resigning from their position, just not really performing the work. A real power to the people movement. These next two items go hand in hand. Inflation hits a high water mark of 9%, and the Fed increases interest rates to offset inflation, or at least attempt to offset inflation. The cost of goods went up noticeably, hitting the pocketbooks of Americans. Historically, the inflation rate uh, is, is just above 3%. We were well above that mark. Increasing interest rates were meant to slow down spending and borrowing. This continues to be a work in progress today. This led to macro uh, unease with less funding being available. Money became more expensive with that higher interest rate. Many companies then shifted their growth at all cost mindset to focus on profitability and efficiency. 
the rule of 40 is as important as ever. This leads to some tech companies in varying size, sizes uh, reducing their workforce. There were over 100,000 layoffs in January, and over the last 12 months, we've seen over 275,000 layoffs. So you can see this shift from employee-friendly conditions over to employer-friendly conditions. Interesting times indeed. And this is obviously not where the story ends. At the time of this conference, there are still some curious ongoings in our banking system that have yet to resolve. With all of that being said, regardless of marketing conditions, you can always find opportunity. Let's jump into how you and your companies can leverage this current situation to your advantage. The first area where organizations have the opportunity to take advantage of this current dynamic is with up-leveling talent. There are a lot of very talented people who are seeking new employment opportunities. A manager or director should have a clear understanding of who are A, B, C performers. Management has the opportunity to replace bottom quartile performers or a performer with someone who is at least at the 50th percentile or better, hopefully even better. This assumes that you've allowed an individual to ramp, invested adequately in their enablement and coached them on the desired behaviors to perform their specific role. If they're not performing at the expected level, go find someone who will. Your next superstar may be looking for work right now. This is also a time where hiring managers and their recruiting counterparts should reevaluate the hiring process. Specifically, can you evolve or improve your ideal candidate profile? Can you better vet talent through your interview questions? Are your, your interviewers all following a similar process to gauge candidate competencies? Raise your talent bar through improved candidates and better hires to find gritty, coachable performers. Any hiring manager should always have a bench. You should treat your candidate funnel like your sales funnel. How many candidates are applying each week and from what source? Track your pass-through rates from recruiting phone screen to manager phone screen to on-site to offer. What is inspected will be respected. Hiring managers and recruiters should also be paying attention to shifts in marketplace. Track which companies have reduced their workforce and what roles were impacted. Can those individuals potentially fill vacancies you have on your team? Obviously, the individuals who may have been let go are looking for new opportunities, but even individuals who are not let go may be more inclined to take a phone screen with a potential employer because their sense of job security has been affected. This is also where we can rely on the power of our networks and platforms like LinkedIn to help guide individuals to hiring companies. About a month ago, I saw a few sales leaders create a public Google sheet of which companies were hiring and what roles uh, were available. That was a really powerful resource for people who suddenly found themselves out of work. It was also great to see a community work together to help each other. The third area of focus for companies is internal reflection. How can we increase our productivity, performance, and even group morale? Find areas to get better so you can ultimately be more efficient with your headcount to get as much juice for your squeeze as possible. Again, this is an era of profitability and efficiency. If you're not already doing this, I would encourage you to leverage internal surveys as they're very powerful tools. Ask your team what you should start doing, stop doing, and continue doing. Do they feel like they receive the training they need? This could be a skill training or tech stack training to get the most out of the software you use for prospecting. What skill does your team feel like they're struggling with? Your reps will tell you where you need to focus your efforts. If you ask them, lean into and embrace that feedback loop. 
The last item is about company culture and values. Do you have them clearly defined and stated? How do your reps feel about uh, company culture and values? Are your values lived each day or are they just texts on documents or company swag? Culture is king and bring culture to life. So what elements and offerings best attracts and retains talent? Dep depending on who you ask, you may get different answers. These responses come from a survey conducted by Factor 8 on the state of virtual and inside sales, focusing on sales team retention. So according to surveyed leaders, these are the top five items that sales professionals want. Number one is compensation. What's your OTE? What's the average W-2 for individuals in this role? Show me the money, right? Work flexibility and work-life balance come in at number two. Items three and four kind of go hand in hand. The training and professional development is about the enablement and available resources. And then career growth is about promotion opportunities that, can, um, that uh, a company can help, that basically can a company help someone get to the next level. You know, SDR to AE, individual contributor to manager. And the final, final item on the list is culture. Do your reps uh, feel a sense of belonging and purpose? Are the employees and employer values aligned? But if you ask reps what they want, you get a different answer, or at least a different order. This may be surprising to you. I know that the order of these responses would not have been my guess. The item reps most crave is training and development, product training, process training, and skill-based training. Reps want to be invested in, nurtured, and coached. Again, ask the reps on your team what they want to learn and teach them about this topic. The manager doesn't need to be the only person doing these trainings or these teachings. You can lean on one of your stronger reps to lead the training. Maybe the rep who wants to get into management. They then want to be able to take the next step in their career with their company. As a manager, you need to help define the career paths available to your reps. Most reps want to get into AE roles, so, you know, specifically SDRs want to get into AE roles, but jobs in renewals, customer success, sales operations, and sales enablement may work for some individuals too. So know the skills needed for the next role and begin to train your more tenured reps on those topics. The third item is coaching and feedback. Put this on a big, bold sign. Make your one-on-ones count. Each one-on-one -on -one should have an element of coaching. Either what the manager sees as areas uh, that have to improve or where the rep wants to get better. We all need to bring more coaching into management. Rounding out this list, we have work flexibility and compensation. Employees, have come to expect a work-life work balance and perks. You should know how your company offerings match up against other companies that may be talent competitors. Not necessarily product or market competitors, but companies who are looking to sign the same talent you are. Compensation's always going to matter. Bills need to get paid, rent is due, and a lifestyle needs to be maintained. This list on the right really reinforces that people don't quit companies, they quit managers. Each of us have had great bosses and each of us have probably had not as great bosses. But be an impactful manager. Be the manager that your reps will look back at and say, you really took the time and effort to help them evolve professionally. This is similar to how you may look back and, and fondly recall a teacher in elementary school or high school who really made an impression on you. You have that opportunity as a manager. Now, all of these items are important and different people want different things. This is where as a manager, you need to know what motivates each member of your team and uh, how do, can you work collectively towards those goals. Pay attracts, development retains. Okay, so we've spoken about what companies should do to take advantage of this period and what helps retain talent, but what about the individual? 
What should employees look for in their next employer? If you're looking to make, you know, if you're you're looking to make a career move, how should you evaluate your next professional chapter? This is what we're going to get into next. All right. So the employer checklist. What do you need to know before signing your next offer letter? What are the criteria you should consider before making a professional change? Number one is the product you are selling. You should be passionate about your solution and the value it brings to your customers. Make sure you believe in it. Your prospects and customers will hear this in your voice and in your pitch. To be clear, you need to know if your product is a nice to have or a need to have. Do companies need your solution to operate or not? Another way of looking at this is if your customer has to reduce operating cost, how easy is it for them to cut your solution, product, or service? Don't be expendable. Number two on this list is the caliber of your leadership. This is your CEO. This is your head of sales. This is every other group leader at your company from your head of marketing to operations to product. Make sure they have a track record of success. How have other companies where they've worked fared? It's easy to be a leader or easier to be a leader during good times, but during the challenging times is where re real leadership will be put to the test. Make sure you have a steady hand at the helm. Number three on this list is especially important if you are a startup, which I know many of you work for. What round of funding is your company on? Who are the VCs backing your company? Who are the other successful companies in your VCs portfolios? Funding is important, but funding from high quality VCs will illustrate how the investor community feels about your solution and leadership team. Good way to find a solid company is to find a well-respected VC, look up their company portfolio on the VC website, and if a portfolio company is in an interesting market or has an exciting product, go to their website, see if they're hiring. Number four, who do you work for? How do you get along with your manager or direct supervisor? Will they invest in you and help you develop? During the interview process, ask to speak to other members of the team. Ask to speak to someone uh, that they've promoted off their team. Reference checks uh, can be a two-way street. You can speak to someone the hiring manager connects you with, or you can find an employer or two on LinkedIn to set up a phone call about the employer and manager. Professional decisions are big, life-impacting decisions. All right, rounding us out uh, at number five is career growth. Will you have the chance to get promoted? How many promotions have come out of your group in the last 12 months? How many people has your manager promoted? On LinkedIn, you can see the company growth rate year over year. With growth comes promotion opportunities. Growth means new roles are being created. The company um, is not really growing. Those promotion opportunities may only be available when a vacancy is created in a current role. Too many SDRs get trapped in pre-sales roles with promises of promotions that never come. Know what you're signing up for. All right, to recap, know that all market conditions create opportunities. Create these opportunities for yourself and your team. This is just a phase and will come and go with regular economic cycles. So don't project today into perpetuity as today is only a snapshot in time. But at the same time, don't look at your situation through rose-colored glasses. If your company is facing real turbulence, take note and be prepared to act. If you're at a solid company, you should prioritize your own professional development over a title change, at least in this period. Glassdoor, RepView, Crunchbase are great resources of information. Leverage your network, grow your network. And as a wise woman once said, your network is your net worth. All right, lastly, a plug for Samsara. Uh, we're hiring for a number of roles. Please check out our career page if you're interested. Have a great rest of your day. 
enjoy the rest of the phenomenal speakers presenting through this conference. Have a good one.